I'm Mike, and today, ethical omnivorism. A group of people that believe that they are eating meat and other animal products in an ethical way. Is it the ultimate moral diet solution? Or is it just putting nice sounding words in front of not so nice things? First off, what actually is ethical omnivorism? Well, quote, ethical omnivorism is a human diet involving the consumption of meat, eggs, dairy, and produce that can be traced back to a farm that raises grass-fed, free-range, antibiotic, and hormone-free livestock, uses GMO-free feed, and blah, blah, blah. And to capture the attitude from ethicalomnivore.org, quote, we are positively passionate about local and ethical family farms and ranches that provide organic vegetables, grass-fed beef, pastured pork, lamb, rabbit, poultry, and dairy, going on to say that, quote, there need be no shame in the use of animal products, just in the cruel, wasteful, careless, irreverent attainment of them. Okay, before I get to the gritty stuff, I will say there are some things about the ethical omnivore movement that I agree with. It's better to not ship your food across the world in most cases. Industrial slash chemical agriculture is very damaging. One of my main goals is environmental sustainability, and I want to eliminate animal cruelty. And these things are why it's also appealing for people that are either interested in or temporarily try a vegan diet, like Melanie Murphy, for example. I follow and believe in and I propose to everyone is ethical omnivorism and what this means is first off really minimizing the amount of meat that you consume and second off sourcing it locally and supporting local farmers. But I'm going to be straightforward what I agree with stops there. Omnivores don't don't turn the video off just because I'm disagreeing with you hear me out temporarily putting aside the obvious rift in belief between me a vegan and ethical omnivores I want to focus on how ethical omnivores end up eating against their own set of morals We already know they don't eat within vegan morals That's obvious and I will get to that in a bit But if you actually really wanted to be true to your own standards as an ethical omnivore You would have to completely renounce all animal products like a vegan unless you knew exactly where they came from. When I've talked to people about this, they usually respond with, but I know where all my food comes from. And I have to say, do you really? Maybe you've been to one of the farms at your local farmer's market, but did you track the eggs and the cookies that your aunt baked all the way back to the battery caged hens that laid them? Or have you actually looked into Whole Foods sustainable meat? Hint, it's ugly. And when any omnivore is handed an ice cream cone, they are not thinking about the conditions of the dairy cows. And finally, even if you have your own farm with your own backyard chickens and you euthanize your pig before you eat it, when you get invited over to a friend's house, are you gonna be like, is this sustainable local pampered pot roast that was only fed non-GMO food? No, I don't think so. And that's because you've opened up a floodgate. No matter how good your intentions are, when you open up your diet to categorically include animal products, you are guaranteed going to support some animal cruelty, which is by definition against the ethical omnivore mission. And this in many cases is a labeling issue. With just one buzzword in there, a green light can go off in someone's head. Just because a meat package says sustainable, that doesn't mean the animal wasn't confined or castrated without painkillers. Most of these terms are either not regulated or have massive loopholes built in. Free range, for example, is very easy to cheat. I'm not gonna show any graphic images here, but here is a quote that sums it up. If you go to a free range farm and expect to see a bunch of chickens galloping around in pastures, you're kidding yourself from Richard Lobb, a spokesman for the chicken industry. Free range turkeys can still be de-beaked. Pasture-raised cattle are still sent to the same feedlots and the same slaughterhouses as the others. And what I'm really trying to say here is that there are a million ways to be cruel to animals and it's not a single buzzword that's gonna undo all of that, especially in a profit-driven system where treating animals better costs you. It's a bit like clean coal, putting a nice buzzword before it makes you feel better about it, but no matter how clean you burn the coal, it will still release CO2, and still about 40% of the world's coal mines are strip mines. They essentially took the area that they were insecure about, being dirty as an industry, flipped it upside down, came up with the word clean, and then just slapped it in front of the word coal. In the case of being an omnivore, one's biggest insecurity would be not being ethical, so just putting the word ethical before omnivore does it really do it? What might be the most disturbing example of this mentality of buzzwords comes from ethicalomnivore.org with quote, we are opposed to crated veal, we do support some pink veal that is raised according to pasture-based protocol. 
Does putting the word pink before veal mean it's okay to eat a baby animal? In this case, a calf? I don't care if it had a few months in a pasture or a mansion, I just don't see how that fits anybody's definition of ethical. Okay, up until this point I've worked within ethical omnivore reasoning and standards, and now it's pretty clear it's time to get into vegan standards, my own ethics, and so on. First point, there is no such thing as ethically killing or exploiting animals. Whoa, 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 who said I exploit animals? The definition of exploitation is pretty clear. Utilization of another person or group for selfish purposes. That is what you're doing when you're eating an animal-based food. Even if you're just paying for it to happen. In fact, if you're paying for it, take that and multiply it by a factor known as capitalism. In prehistoric times, if it were a matter of survival, that is a different context, but today we are drowning in an overconsumption of calories and excess and diseases from that even. We simply have no nutritional requirements for animal-based foods. Here's my obligatory American Dietetics Association position on vegetarian and vegan diets, showing that a vegan diet is sufficient for all stages of development. But I used to be the same way. We are conditioned to believe that our health is in jeopardy if we don't eat animal products. And it is worth addressing. There are a lot of people that are now ethical omnivores that used to be on a vegetarian or vegan stint. And then for some reason or another, they had a health issue and they believe that the logical and of course the most acceptable thing was to go back to eating animal products. I don't want to be a typical vegan and be like, you did vegan wrong, but think about how many people do omnivore wrong, and the science and the numbers are really not on your side in this one. From the Adventist 2 study alone, vegan populations have 78% less risk of getting diabetes, 14% less cancer, way less obesity, 15% less death, and considerably less heart disease. And those are not health food vegans, those people were vegan for religious reasons. Some people have pointed to nutrients in particular that made them go off the vegan path onto the ethical omnivore path, like this woman and her iron. But like any other diet, if you are missing a nutrient, you just seek that nutrient out within your dietary palate. Let's use iron as an example. If you're an omnivore who is low in iron, like approximately 7% of the population who is anemic, you don't lick a cast iron pan, you just eat some iron-rich foods within your diet. So when you're low on a vegan diet, you can simply focus on plant-based sources of iron, which are abound and plentiful. And if you want even more iron, you can also eat vitamin C-rich plant foods at the same time to increase your absorption by regularly about threefold, which is more absorbable than heme or animal-based iron, and that effect does not work on heme iron. Finally, quote, even in diets with a high meat content, heme iron accounts for only 10 to 15% of total iron intake. You simply do not need to eat meat. Another point that doesn't jive with veganism is the idea of reducing, not eliminating, but reducing meat consumption as ethical omnivores do. But in my experience, people that say they're going to reduce meat consumption don't necessarily actually do it and are also the people that are the strongest advocates for certain types of meat. Like Mr. Ethical Omnivore himself, Michael Pollan, who famously advocated for eating less meat a while back, and he just came out with the Netflix series Cooked, which is essentially a meaty celebration of barbecue pit masters, locally raised pig carcasses, and it's very self-congratulatory to men and their relationship with meat and masculinity and fire and all that jazz. Like Michael Pollan in that show, I have yet to see any reducitarians really not eat meat on any single given meal. Breakfast is usually eggs and milk, lunch is some cheesy, meaty dish with a dairy-laden dessert, and dinner's the same. It's animal exploitation three times a day anyway. But what I find equally irresponsible of Michael Pollan and the ethical omnivore movement is lending credence to the plants feel pain argument with Michael Pollan's article on plant intelligence or on ethicalomnivore.org and I have a very recent video on this so feel free to watch that for actual details on this. Plants do not feel pain but the reason this is such an important topic for ethical omnivores is because they know they cause animals pain and they need to diminish that. And I think that's what twists vegans the wrong way about ethical omnivores, that they know about the animal suffering, they know about all of the consequences, yet they refuse to give up their habits. 
It's like waking up from the Matrix and deciding to be plugged in. Like this fucking guy, Cypher, he colluded with the agents, and then he was like, oh, just wipe my memory, plug me back in, and make me rich. It's just going back to ignorance because that's more comfortable. In the end, no, putting a nice pretty word behind something does not make it humane, does not make it ethical. Does pasture fed mean the animal didn't suffer? Does local make it any more okay to kill an animal? Does putting the word pink in there make it okay to kill and eat a baby animal? Does putting the word humane before slaughter actually make it okay? No, but a vegan diet doesn't have to worry about this. You don't have to worry about lettuce slaughter and whether or not it was humane. And most importantly, putting the word ethical before something, in this case omnivore, does not make it ethical. <sighs> I think this core value from ethicalomnivore.org sums it up pretty well. Quote, We believe in helping our population eat with a clean conscience. Not we believe in ending animal exploitation, and not we believe in ending the killing of animals for no reason other than taste and cultural inertia. None of these, it's simply just a way to make you feel better about doing the same thing. All right, if you consider yourself an ethical omnivore, you probably stopped watching this a while ago. But if you didn't, how about trying to eat within your own morals? And that is, duh, yep, I'm gonna say it, a vegan diet. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. And I will also be in a few days at the Chicago Vegan Food and Drink Festival, June 25th. I know a lot of you are gonna be there already. I'm super excited for it. So come if you aren't coming already and thank you for watching.